Hi everybody, and thank you for joining this CNCF webinar. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Cluster API and GitOps, the key to Kubernetes lifecycle management. So my name is Nick. I'm the Delver lead um, at Spectro Cloud. And what I want to focus on today is a deep dive on a you know, hands-on use case. Typically, you will find a lot of talks and presentation on Cluster API, uh, GitOps, and both together. But most of the time, they will give you like a simple example um, or a very simple use case. Um, today, I want you to have a transparent experience. I'm not going to hide anything around Cluster API, GitOps, uh, and Argo CD, which is the GitOps tool we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to do everything live, and we're going to see uh, what are you know the, the considerations you have to um, to make to basically uh, make GitOps with Cluster API useful in your organization. So let's take a quick look at the uh, agenda for today. So first, um, I'm going to quickly go over uh, Cluster API and GitOps principle. Um, then we're going to take a, uh, a closer look at um, Cluster API components and what a provisioning workflow look like. Um, then we're going to talk about um, you know, what sort of additional tools you may want to have on top of Cluster API um, and address some caveats, especially when you want to combine um, with Orgo CD or any other uh, GitOps tooling. And then we'll have uh, the use case deep dive live demos. Um, and then I'll do like another demo also as we um, as we move forward. Um, we're going to start with you know simple demo, and then we, we, we're going to build our um, our full use case. So let's get started. Before talking about um, cluster API or you know, GitOps or any other sort of tooling that work with the same pattern in Kubernetes, which is the operator. Uh, pattern. Uh, so let's talk about this first. So um, operators are not something really new. It's been there for a couple of years now. Um, but what makes it very different uh, compared to you know what people used to do in Kubernetes before is that you can bring automation inside of Kubernetes as opposed you know uh, to uh, infrastructure as code or other um, tools like that. Is that they live outside of Kubernetes. With the operator pattern, you are bringing automation capability within the Kubernetes cluster. So how it works, it's basically, uh, it has multiple components. First, uh, you have what we call uh, customer source definition in the case of uh, cluster API. Well, um, cluster API implements uh, a lot of custom resources, the cluster itself, machine, machine deployment, we're going to see them later. Um, but they are essentially uh, resources that extend the native um, initial Kubernetes API by making those objects first-class citizen inside Kubernetes. Um, then the second uh, component of the operator pattern is the, a custom controller. So the role of the custom controller is to monitor changes that are realized on those custom resources, like um, Cluster API cluster and others, and then um, react and perform certain actions based on events. So for example, if you create a new Cluster API cluster, then the custom controller of Cluster API will make sure that this cluster will be deployed in the right environment with the right machine, the right instances, um, size, the right network, et cetera, et cetera. So it's automating things outside of the Kubernetes cluster while at the same time monitoring a representation of these resources within the Kubernetes cluster. And it does this permanently. So in other words, that means that the custom controller, or I mean, it doesn't have to be only one. You will see in the cluster API, there are more than one custom controller. They are creating a reconciliation loop between 
the desired state, which is the resources that are uh, created within the cluster, and the real current state of the infrastructure, um, which is what exists outside of the Kubernetes cluster here in the case of cluster API. This is the state of the cluster you want to, um, to deploy. So now let's talk about the GitOps pattern. So a GitOps pattern means that you are storing not only your code on um, your uh, repository, so that would be like the, the dev that stores his code on a Git repo, the application code, which is on top um, of this re representation here. Traditionally, you know, it's going to trigger a pipeline that may be uh, living within GitHub Actions in that particular example, build the image, and then this is the traditional um, you know, developer uh, pipeline. Now, a GitOps pipeline will add another component to it. So uh, more specifically here, you will generate, or the dev slash platform engineer or you know, DevOps engineer will create uh, the right workflow to generate the Kubernetes manifests for that for deploying that particular application. So here, that means that the Kubernetes manifests stored on the Git repository contain um, all the objects required to um, to install the application on the cluster. So we need an extra tool to create a recon reconciliation loop between these desired state, so the manifests, and what is deployed in the cluster, the current state of the cluster. In our case, in the example today, we're going to be using Argo CD, which is going to be responsible for that particular automation. So any change uh, pushed into the manifests will be implemented into the cluster. So for example, if you change the container image, Argo CD will reconcile this within the cluster and replace the image where appropriate. If you delete the application and have you know, enabled the pruning function, then Argo CD will delete um, the application in, in the cluster. So of course, there are uh, multiple benefits of doing this. So the first one is that now, you know, as I said, everything is managed declaratively. There's no imperative command. Um, so it's kind of avoiding any possible mistakes made by human because we bring this extra automation and then there's the second benefit, which is around security, because now all those operations are, are performed by you know, a service account associated with Argo CD, and only that particular uh, service account will require permissions to perform uh, action within a particular namespace or within the cluster, which is, in the end, um, reducing the attack surface of that particular cluster. So now let's take a quick overview of cluster API and some of the main components. So at the very top, the cluster API uh, cluster type is merely an interface for um, more you know, specific and lower level implementation details that are implemented by the infrastructure provider. Uh, and then we also have other providers um, that Cluster API uh, relies upon. We have the bootstrap provider and the control plane providers. So as I was saying, the infrastructure provider role is to encapsulate uh, all the tasks uh, that are specific to a particular cloud or infrastructure. Um, things like you know, defining inst instance sizes for the different um, nodes, um, how you implement a load balancer, uh, which network you want to use, these type of things. So I, I gave a couple of examples here. Um, CAPG for um, cluster API provider GCP, CAPA for AWS, and CAPZ for Azure, and there are many others. Um, so the, the role of the bootstrap provider is basically to turn um, any machine into a Kubernetes node uh, using cloud init scripts. So the, the bootstrap provider by default, if you don't specify anything, kubedm is going to be used. So that's going to be the cloud init script corresponding to um, making sure you know kubedm is used to turn that machine into a 
uh, that instance into a Kubernetes node. Um, then there is uh, CAPPM for microcades, a cap CAPPT for Talos, if you are deploying a Talos cluster, which is uh, a curated, let's say, very opinionated Kubernetes cluster. The control plane provider will be responsible for um, creating the control plane nodes. So in the same way, um, the bootstrap provider is responsible for turning you know, a machine into a, um, uh, into a worker. The control plane provider is responsible for turning the machine um, into a control plane. Uh, it does have all the, the config specification, the type of instance, the machine template. Um, you want to use all those kind of things. And all those, those uh, three components are uh, combined into options for the cluster CTL init command that um, uh, you perform when you want to deploy the cluster API comp components into your existing management uh, Kubernetes cluster that you are going to be uh, using um, for you know, hosting the, the cluster API resources. So cluster CTL init will take, so those three options, B for bootstrap provider, I for infrastructure, C for, for control plane. Uh, you can omit B and C, and then <clears throat> uh, the system will assume that uh, you want to use KubeADM as the bootstrap and the control plane providers, um, which is quite common. And then the remaining only required parameter is the dash I for the infrastructure provider. Uh, and in our case, is going to be um, GCP. So now let's take a look um, at the different controllers involved um, with a cluster API and the different resources they are responsible for. So uh, we can map out the different components here to what we've just seen. Uh, in the middle here, we have um, the controller manager for the infrastructure provider, so the CAPG controller manager. On, um, the top right, this is the uh, bootstrap provider corresponding controller manager. And on the bottom right, this is the control plane provider corresponding uh, controller. And then on um, the far left, this is the main uh, controller for cluster API responsible for uh, the most you know, generic object. So, this one is responsible for uh, the cluster, um, then for the machine deployment. So the cluster is, as I said earlier, the interface for the more specific implementation of um, the cluster within the cloud provider you want to target. So this is why it's making references to the infrastructure provider, the cluster uh, in, inside the infrastructure provider, which is the GCP cluster. So there's, if the infrastructure provider is GCP, there's a one-to-one -one mapping between uh, the generic cluster and the more specific GCP cluster. Um, but of course, the cluster is also composed of um, the, the control plane, of course. So then this is why you have a reference to the control plane provider uh, from uh, within the cluster. Right. So we have a reference to a GCP cluster, and we have a reference to um, the controller manager responsible for deploying the control plane. Now, for the worker nodes, this is where you have the machine deployment that is defined um, uh, here on the left. And it's similar to a deployment in Kubernetes in the way it behaves. So in Kubernetes, a deployment um, a resource is responsible for controlling how different pods are um, are deployed within the cluster. So responsible for um, managing the number of replicas, how they are started, and making sure you always have the right number um, of desired pods running. Here, same principle, but for your worker nodes. The machine deployment is going to manage a machine set and the machine set is going to be composed of one or several machines. And again, this is quite generic machine. And this machine will have a one-to-one -one mapping 
with a GCP machine. So one-to-one -one mapping with a GCP machine and the GCP machine will encapsulate uh, the specific information related to your infrastructure provider. So related to, uh, to GCP in our case. Um, and then the machine deployment itself, which is acting as, you know, re making reference to a template, will also have a reference to a GCP machine template, the same way a deployment makes reference to a uh, pod template. And in addition to that, um, we've seen before that the bootstrap provider was responsible for turning uh, the machine into a worker node. So the machine deployment makes also a reference um, to that particular object managed by the KubeDM bootstrap uh, controller. Also, I didn't represent all relations um, here on the picture. Like for example, the control plane also has a relation to, uh, of course, a GCP machine template. Uh, because it needs to um, get the machine from um, you know, the machine information from somewhere. So yeah, I didn't represent all the relations because otherwise, um, or all the objects, because it will be just too much. It's just like the main ones. Um, I know it may be a, a bit abstract at the moment, but uh, what I can propose is to go through um, our first demo where uh, we'll deploy um, a workload cluster from Cluster API. Um, the only thing is that I've um, already installed um, Cluster API within the management cluster, meaning that I've run uh, the command uh, cluster CTL. But what we can do already is just to check that I have nothing in my uh, GCP environment. Uh, and again, and then uh, we're going to start uh, from there. So let's take a look at the management cluster right now. Um, so I'm using K9s, uh, which is very useful to get you know quick access at whatever information uh, you want on the cluster. Uh, so here I can see that um, you know cluster CTL init has deployed the main components, so the CRDs, which we're going to see in a minute, and then also all the controller manager. So KG uh, controller manager, which is the infrastructure provider controller. Uh, then we have uh, the bootstrap uh, controller uh, manager, so the boot, bootstrap provider controller. We have the control plane um, controller, control plane provider controller, and we have the generic, I mean, main um, cluster API uh, controller there. In terms of CLDs, uh, anything ending with cluster.x-kates.io has been, has been installed by cluster API. So we can have see here cluster, I don't have any cluster deployed. I, and so with a one-to-one -one mapping to GCP cluster, don't have anything uh, there yet. Um, so let's create um, the cluster. So the command you want to do is cluster CTL generate. Um, and then you specify the name of the cluster. So that would be Capi Nick here, the Kubernetes version, number of control plane nodes, and number of uh, worker nodes as well. And this is going to generate the manifests that you can redirect into a file. And then we're just going to take a look into that file uh, once it's been generated. OK, let's take a look. So we have a bunch of information there. Uh, let's start we, with the cluster, so generic information like the cluster network block, the side of block here, um, making reference to uh, the control plane, making reference to the infrastructure provider, as I was mentioning before, one-to-one um, -one mapping with the GCP cluster, a bit more um, specific information like the GCP network here, as well as the project ID, the region where we want to um, deploy cluster, the, the workload cluster. Now, in terms of the control plane, a bunch of information like the kubeDM configuration spec, um, the machine templates, as I was mentioning, also used by uh, uh, the control plane um, to generate I mean, to deploy um, the nodes. Here are the GCP machine templates, 
reference by um, the control plane and the machine deployment um, using that particular image. We're going to see, you know, what are the restrictions on images and, um, you know, what consideration you need to have uh, for them. The instance type, then we have the machine deployment for the worker nodes, um, the bootstrap saying that, you know, how are you going to join the cluster with the kubedm config template. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's basically uh, all the information that we need to deploy our cluster. So now the only, th only thing that we need to do is to apply this manifest into our cluster and see what's happening. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven custom resource created. So we can already uh, take a look here, the cluster, we should see something here. It's provisioning already. Uh, GCP cluster, of course, same thing. Um, GCP machines, we should see something eventually. The first, the control plane to so the worker nodes is gonna, not going to be deployed until the control plane um, is, um, is deployed. Machine template, we should see the two, one for the control plane. Uh, one for the worker nodes. We also have the kubedm config um, there for um, the bootstrap. This is for the workers. Then we have the kubedm control plane for the control plane nodes. Desired, yes. Not, not available yet, as you can see. Uh, the machines. Yeah, this is pending at the moment because remember machines, this is for the worker. Worker is going to be provisioned once the um, control plane has been provisioned. We can take um, a look at some of the logs there um, while it's deploying. So um, the main cluster API controller is basically waiting for the infrastructure provider here. You can see infrastructure provider um, to um, to provision all the different component in GCP, and this is the infrastructure provider corresponding controller. So it's currently reconciling. Uh, this is expected. Um, so reconciling instance. So it must be already there in in, uh, in GCP. We're going to see in a moment. Uh, the bootstrap. This is still waiting, right? for uh, the machine, the, um, the worker and the control plane should be doing something here, still reconciling. Um, so it's not finished yet. Just take a look quickly um, at what's happening in GCP and then we'll continue, um, we move forward and take a look later when we start the, um, the second demo. So here you can already see that uh, the control plane has been provisioned. Uh, and then in a moment, we'll have uh, the worker as well. But uh, yeah, for the moment, let's go back to uh, our slide. And move forward. So the question you have to ask yourself now is cluster API enough to deploy a cluster? Um, not really as such, right? Because, okay, the cluster, although not fully deployed yet, once it's deployed, it won't be necessarily working because first, we didn't install any CNI, right? So it's not part of the cluster API process um, to install the CNI. And this has to be managed after the cluster has been provisioned. So it means that provisioning nodes, uh, which are not ready. Also, how um, do you plan for the underlying operating system used by Cluster API? Well, there's a tool called Image Builder um, that's, cluster, that's also part of the Cluster API documentation um, that is a mix of HashiCorp Packer with Ansible to uh, generate 
Kubernetes ready images. So what that means, Kubernetes ready, it means that for the particular version of Kubernetes you want to install. So I'm speaking here, for example, if you want, you know, traditional instances, so non-managed Kubernetes. So let's say like in, in GCP, like we did, um, the op underlying operating system image needs need to embed, uh, you know, kubelets, um, and um, you know, with the right version and all the the, the Kubernetes um, uh, binaries uh, needs to be present there with the right version. So you need to build the image before that. And same thing when you are upgrading. Um, of course, you know, you can declaratively upgrade your cluster by changing the version numbers. But first, you have to make sure that the image you're using will have. Uh, the right numbers, the right versions as well. So this is something you have to manage yourself. Um, which leads to another uh, question. How do you add um, additional software or infrastructure components like the CSI? Uh, maybe you want some uh, ingress or you know any other components and any other software layer. Um, this is where, you know, GitOps principle may uh, may kick in, uh, but we'll see what are the different options in in a moment. Um, and how to provide uh, auto scaling for the number of nodes? It's not part of you know the, the base uh, components we've just seen now. This is something you have to to do extra to plan for extra. Um, and then the last one is okay. Now if you want to deliver all that, all this automation by also using GitOps principles. So, you know, delivering all the cl cluster API manifests into a Git repository and GitOps to kick in, what are, you know, what is the work that remains to do that? Right. So this is what we are going to see now. So our um, more, let's say, detailed use case uh, comprises all those um, components. So first, um, to solve the additional software layer issue, uh, there's a, another a project called Cluster API Add-on Provider Helm, or C-A-A-P-H. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, so I will just use the individual letter, letter um, which is aimed at creating Helm proxy within your management cluster so that you can install um, within your workload cluster some Helm charts. So you are applying um, the different manifest to create the CRDs, so also using CRDs. So the Helm proxies, and uh, there's also another CRD we're going to see. So there are two CRDs are going to be, uh, so the custom resource, you apply them into your management cluster. And then from there, you can define in what workload cluster those Helm charts need to be um, needs, needs to be installed. So that's an efficient way to, um, to deploy software inside your uh, workload cluster directly from your management cluster as an additional step. Then there's also the cluster autoscaler project. So that's the same sort of um, you know, principle where you deploy the autoscaler component. Uh, you can actually deploy them in the workload cluster or in the management cluster. Um, in our use case, we're going to deploy them into the, um, the management cluster. I say them because for every workload cluster um, you want to um, to create, you need a, a dedicated instance of the cluster autoscaler, uh, you know, components. So the pod um, needs to run for every workload cluster. Then, of course, we're going to be using Argo CD to deploy uh, the workload clusters. Um, and Argo CD will be responsible for, um, you know, also managing, I mean, not only managing the creation of the workload cluster, but the provisioning of the add-ons using the cluster API add-on provider Helm, and also responsible um, for adding information 
to the autoscaler, autoscaler pod because the, in the architecture uh, we are de deploying today, right, autoscaler is installed within the management cluster. So the autoscaler pod need to get access to the workload cluster to be able um, to monitor the resource. So how autoscaler is working, uh, it's basically monitoring pods that are in pending state because of um, resources that are not available from the node. If, if that happens, then it's going to provision new nodes. After 10 minutes, uh, for example, if you remove all those uh, pods, uh, if those nodes are not um, you know, required anymore because you, know, you have enough resources um, in, your, in your cluster, then the, the worker nodes are going to be destroyed. And to do that, um, auto the, the cluster autoscaler pod need access to the kubeconfig of your workload cluster, right? So it needs to be implemented in a sequential fashion. First, you need to deploy your workload cluster uh, by using Argo CD uh, in our case. And secondly, once it's been deployed, you can get the um, kubeconfig and then inject the kubeconfig into your uh, autoscaler pod. Uh, if you want to manage this with Argo CD, that leads to another sort of issue, right? Because um, GitOps means that you are going to check in, um, you know, to, to push information into Git. You don't want to push a clear text um, kubeconfig file into Git. So we're going to be using SOPs, so Secure Operation from Mozilla, um, to encrypt uh, the kubeconfig file and um, customize, um, which is you know, like Helm, a way to uh, manage packages, uh, not packages, but a way to um, manage how you deploy application in Kubernetes. So Helm is doing packaging, customize is more like a configuration management tool. Um, so customize supports SOPs decryption via KSOPs, and that will allows us, allow us to decrypt the kubeconfig in Argo CD. Uh, but for this, we need to implement a couple of things. So first, um, we're going to be using the app of apps pattern in Argo CD. That just means that um, we're going to create an Argo CD application. And the only job of that um, application, the only function, is to host other application uh, definitions. So um, that particular pattern is useful to automatically add um, children application. Because here, um, so you have a representation here on the left, right? So we, you have the parent application, which is um, CAPI clusters, right? Because you can then manage all your cluster as a pack. Of application, right? So here for our development environment that we are going to provision, we will need to do two things: deploy the cluster, right, and then get, of course, the kubeconfig file, and then in the second um, part, inject the kubeconfig into um, autoscaler and deploy the autoscaler pods into the management cluster. <clears throat> so um, just to combine them into a single, let's say, application pack, you can use the application of, applica of apps, the app of apps pattern. And also, um, so as I said, the benefit is that um, now those applications, those Argo CD application uh, contain the definition, right, of the children application, which means that as soon as you synchronize the parent, so the CAPI cluster application, automatically here on the right, you can see the children application are going to be created automatically um, within your Argo CD environment. Right? So it makes, it makes the management a lot, a lot easier. Argo CD supports both Helm and Customize to deploy manifest into the destination Kubernetes cluster. So we're going to be using Helm to customize the cluster API resources and install um, you know, our workload cluster resources 
in our cluster API management cluster. And then we're going to be using Customize mainly because of the SOPS capabilities and because Customize can easily um, configure a specific portion of resource manifests and customize them. So that means that our Go CD will need to be patched to support KSOPS and also modified um, to import our encryption key. By default, Argo CD, um, the, the customized version of Argo CD, the customized, the customized binary of Argo CD doesn't have the right options to, to use KSOPS. So that's one thing we need to fix. And also, of course, the key that is used to um, decrypt the kubeconfig file um, will need to be present into Argo CD. So for that, we're going to be modifying um, the Argo CD image and some of um, the configuration, uh, you know, the config map used to, to configure Argo CD installation within our management cluster. So yeah, that's a lot to do, but let's do it now. Cap it with GitOps. But first, let's check that the cluster we built in our um, previous demo is up and running. So what we can do there is kubectl get clusters. Uh, we can see it's been provisioned. If we take a look at some of the custom resources, let's check the GCP cluster. Okay, so you can see that it is ready. And last thing, let's take a look at the GCP machines here. It's running. And now let's just double check in the uh, Google console that the cluster is effectively available there. there we go. So I need to refresh that page, refresh, and we should see the two machines there appearing. So we have the two machine, one in US Central uh, 1C and the other one in US Central 1A. Okay, so um, I think we can say that it worked perfectly. Now let's move on to the next demo. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, show you the structure of the repository we're going to be using for um, Argo CD. First, we have our parent application definition that is created in Argo CD that will comprise those two children application. So the principle, remember, uh, the principle of the app of apps pattern is to declare the children application into your um, GitOps repository. Um, so we're going to have one application for the cluster autoscaler. Um, what is noticeable here really is the path that we are going to be using without uh, within um, the Git repository, which is the same one here, right? So it's going to be overlays dev. So in the customize part, overlays dev. So those manifests are going to be deployed and reconciled into the cluster. That's for the cluster autoscaler. And the dev cluster here, this is the configuration uh, for cluster API itself. So again, we have the repo URL here, and uh, we're going to be using the pass Helm Capi GCP, which is this one. So it it does have a standard, you know, Helm structure uh, with the manifest template and the values dot YAML that we're going to see in a minute. If we look at Argo CD right now, let's just log in. You can see that I have my application Capi cluster. This is the parent application. If I look at um, the configuration, you can see the repo URL. This is um, our main um, repo source. And then the path is the apps section I just show you. So it's currently out of sync. And you can see that this application so the Capi cluster parent app has two children. So the dev cluster and the dev 
cluster autoscaler. So now let's go back to the repository here. Let's take a look first at the Helm section. So we have the cluster API template. We're going to start with cluster.yaml, which is, remember, you know, the top object. Um, we are going to, to use the same you know, traditional configuration that can be generated by cluster CTL. And we're just going to make a bit more you know, um, templatization around it. So the name, we're going to put this into the cluster name in the um, Helm values file. And then we're going to also add the cluster, you know, the software add-ons we want to install on, on the cluster and specify this into the value add-ons section of the value uh, file. Then for the GCP cluster, again, we're going to de determine, you know, we're going to define, sorry, the cluster name, uh, which is exactly the same as, you know, the, the top level cluster name. Then the project, more specifically, the GCP region. Then here in the machine, machine template control plane, um, we're going to be using um, the you know, a particular instance type for our control plane. And also the GCP image we want to, um, to use is going to be specified there. Same thing for the worker, right? Um, and then for the KubeDM control plane, um, we're going to specify the number of replicas. So for our control plane, the Kubernetes version as well. And uh, for the worker, basically just is going to be uh, the name. And the machine deployment, we're going to have, again, cluster name and the different references you know, with the Kubernetes version and um, the number of worker replicas. That's uh, we can also specify. And on top of that, we are also going to configure uh, some annotation that are used by Cluster Autoscaler. Uh, namely here, we want to set the maximum size of the cluster and the minimum size of the cluster. Right. So let's take a look at the values.yaml, um, which is basically containing all the um, um, the values that we want to uh, to define. So the cluster name, this is CapiDev. We specify the GCP project region, uh, the instance type for the control plane, N1, N1 standard two. The same thing for the worker instance type, GCP image. So we're going to start with a uh, number of control plane uh, replica to one. Same thing for the worker. Um, max, we're going to set it to 10. And um, we've set the minimum to, to one, actually, right? And um, in terms of the add-ons, we're going to install Nginx. Um, and then we're also going to install um, Calico. But Calico doesn't have to have um, the add-on enabled in terms of the annotation, um, because I didn't specify any label selector. If you don't specify any selector, then it just assumes that the add-on will be installed in every single cluster uh, you deploy from the, the management uh, cluster. Now let's take a look at the customized section. So we have the, the base uh, directory where you have all the manifests required to deploy cluster autoscaler. So we have traditionally you know, cluster role binding, for the management cluster, for the workload cluster, cluster role, the, the deployment uh, required for cluster autoscaler to be installed. Um, and this is where you have the command. Um, this is the part that is of interest to us. So this is where we want to specify the kubeconfig file for autoscaler to monitor the workload cluster. And um, this is also um, defining the name of the cluster we want to monitor, right? So those two things are uh, the most important one, the um, auto discovery here, as well as the kubeconfig file. Um, so for our customization here, uh, we need to basically enable, um, activate sort of all these resources for 
customize to use them in our overlay. So in our overlay, we're gonna. This is where we we are going to uh, overwrite the, the the configuration. So first, the deployment. What we're gonna change here is uh, basically the, the the name we want we want to give to the cluster. If we compare it to uh, the one above, right? This is the original one, the base one, which is Capinic. In the deployment here, this will be this will be Capidev. Um, we have also, if we look in the customization, um, we're going to add a prefix dev to all the resources that we are going to create. Uh, and we have also a name reference file. So we want to um, change you know, all the names that we are going to modify, potentially have some references in other um, field. And this is where we're going to um, tell customize to um, to accordingly modify the name in all those references. And then we want to get a secret generator. This is because we want to decrypt the kubeconfig file. And the kubeconfig file we want to decrypt has this pass here. So there is one uh, from one of my prior tests. We're going to rewrite it because we're going to deploy a new, a new cluster. So this is uh, one remaining from um, my previous test. And you can see that um, you know it's it's effectively encrypted there. Right? I cannot make any um, you know use of that file uh, if I want to connect to to the cluster. Everything is encrypted using SOPs. And the the role of the secret generator .yaml is to to specify you know how to decrypt um, the kubeconfig file using the ksops plugin. So what we want to do first is take a look at the Argo CD pod configuration. So let's go back to our um, terminal there. Um, so you can see that I have an Argo CD namespace uh, with many different you know, pods running. So let's take a look first at the Argo CD server uh, located there. Uh, you can see that if I look for image, that it is running um, an image from my uh, personal registry where um, I've added KSOPs uh, to Argo CD, the KSOPs capability. So that's uh, one thing that we need. Um, then if we take a look at the uh, repo server and look just for PGP, you can see that uh, I have created an init container whose role is going to be to import uh, the PGP key that is mounted as a, a new volume into the container, right? So, and then the container, once you know, it does its job, then uh, the, you know, the, the payload, let's say container will take over um, and you know, perform its, uh, its, normal, uh, its normal role. So the idea here is really for Argo CD to get the private key so that uh, when it's gonna be leveraging customized to deploy the manifest and reconcile the manifest into the cluster, it will be able to use the decrypted version of our kubeconfig file. There's a last thing I want to show uh, as well. In terms of Argo CD configuration, we have uh, a config map there where I have, I added extra option so that case ops can be used because it's a plugin. You need to add this extra customize option um, when using customize to do um, to do anything, right? So when Argo CD will call out customize, it's going to add this specific option that will um, allow for the usage of case ops. Now let's go back to Argo CD. And um, what we are going to do is reconcile the application, resync the parent application so that our children application can be installed. So if I look at um, you know, the application status there, I've got my single parent application and that's basically it. So let's sync it and see what happened. So now if you look in the CAPI cluster, you can see that the dev cluster and dev cluster autoscaler 
children application have been synchronized. And now, of course, uh, I've got both my dev cluster and dev cluster autoscaler that are out of sync. So in the order, we want first to deploy the cluster. Then we'll have to do you know, a couple of manual actions to encrypt our kubeconfig file and commit it, push it into our, our repository. And then we'll um, proceed with the cluster autoscaler installation. So first, let's think the dev cluster. So you can see all the components. Those are all the cluster API manifests and um, the objects that are required for um, you know, the, the workload cluster deployment, as we've seen before. So let's first sync this and check what happened. So it's going to basically deploy the cluster. right? So you're going to see it's going to start by creating the machine, GCP machine, and reconcile this in GCP. So we can take a look at what is happening from the GCP console. And if we refresh, we should see now we have both the capi dev control plane as well as the worker node that has been installed. So now we can take a look at all the component deployed. You can see here a complete picture of all the objects deployed. So from the machine deployment for uh, the worker, from the machine, um, also the, the control plane uh, machine here, uh, all those components. So now let's go back to our uh, top application view. Um, so our dev cluster autoscaler, of course, is still out of sync, but before uh, proceeding to the dev cluster autoscaler install, uh, we need to encrypt the config file into a config map. So let's do this now. For this, let's go into our Visual Studio Code environment, open a terminal there. Um, so what I want to do first is, uh, so I'm connected to the right here on the top right, the right cluster. So we can go quickly, QCTL get cluster, which can see that our, of course, capi dev cluster is provisioned. So what we will do now is get the kubeconfig file from cluster CTL. Here we go. Now we need to create a config map out of that um, kubeconfig file. So capidev kubeconfig.yaml. And then we can um, encrypt this in this subs e capidev kubeconfig.yaml into um, the expected file, which is kubeconfig enc.yaml. Here you go. And now if we take a look at that particular file, uh, we're going to see that it's completely obfuscated. All the data from the kubeconfig map is encrypted. And the last part now is to commit and push this into our upstream repository. So create a new cluster. We're going to commit and push. Let's go back to now Argo CD. And now we can sync that application. So we can already see that uh, the kubeconfig config map has been decrypted uh, with the right information. And now let's just think to install cluster autoscaler. Okay, it's being deployed, the pod is being deployed. So now we can check that it, a, a new pod has been deployed into our, uh, our management cluster. And then we can proceed with the auto scaling test and just check that all the application, the add-on application have been installed. Let's connect to our uh, terminal now to check that cluster autoscaler have been effectively installed. The first thing to do now is take a look at the pod. So we can see the dev cluster autoscaler, which is actually a deployment. So let's take a look at the deployment, uh, the dev autoscaler there. And if we display uh, the configuration, we can see the arguments uh, for the command are effectively the ones that we have defined um, from the customization file, right? So 
everything looks good there. I can check the log quickly. It's waiting for logs. Now on the second um, screen here, let's connect to our uh, dev cluster. So first let's get the uh, config file. Uh, we can just set it to copy dev.quickconfig. Just launch K9S. So we can see that Calico has been installed as expected uh, from the add-on layer, as well as the Nginx ingress. So this is all good. And in terms of the nodes, yeah, we have, of course, the two nodes uh, ready that we have deployed in GCP. Now let's take a quick look at the add-ons, where they are coming from. So they are coming from other CRDs that we have installed um, with the um, add-on software layer. We have two CRDs. We have the hand chart proxies and the hand release proxies that will um, install Helm chart in the destination workload cluster. Uh, so here we've added two of them. So first the uh, Nginx and, as, um, and the Calico one. So the, the difference is that if you can see here, the Calico one doesn't have any uh, specific uh, label selector, matching cluster here. It's basically all of them. Right, the current matching cluster, it's all of them because we don't have specified any label selector in the corresponding manifest for that custom resource. For Nginx, it's a bit different. You can see here that you have match label um, for cluster selector. So only the clusters, so the, the cluster API clusters that have that particular label will get Nginx installed. And you can see here, the current matching cluster is only Capi Dev. So now for our uh, last test, let's try to uh, scale the cluster. So uh, we're going to monitor first. Let's check the log for the Dev cluster autoscaler. Now I've got a deployment here. Um, that is reserving or requesting quite you know heavy uh, large resources. Um, in that particular deployment, I have five replicas. So that should trigger the creation of new node. Let's apply that deployment. And again, let's check the cluster. And you can see that now I've got multiple pod pending. And on the right here, you can see that um, the dev cluster autoscaler process is asking to scale up that particular cluster, meaning that is going to trigger uh, the creation of new machine in GCP. So if we go back to the um, Capi controller manager, we should see something happening. So you can see here waiting for the Kubernetes node on the machine to report ready states. So now if we go back to the infrastructure provider logs, yeah, it's going to be uh, reconciling with new machine, new uh, dev instances. And we can check that on uh, here that currently Calico is being deployed on new nodes. So we have effectively new nodes being deployed. It's not ready yet, but Calico is going to be installed. Okay, so we have effectively now two new nodes that just appeared. And now the pods can effectively be started. So all my pods from my deployment have started and the cluster has been scaled.
That concludes our uh, demos for today. I hope um, they've been useful. And now let's conclude that presentation. So we've seen that um, GitOps plus cluster API is not necessarily an easy task. If you want a you know comprehensive set of features, this is most you know of a do-it-yourself uh, process, uh, and you have to dig into very different concept um, and different software. So this is where Palet from Spectral Cloud can really help because it's based on the same principle as you know Cluster API. Actually, we um, have you know, committed a lot of code and uh, contributed to a lot of the existing cluster API providers. Um, and the additional feature that um, Palet will add um, are related to more enterprise features. So we are really dec decoupling and making cluster API more usable uh, by separating you know, the actual cluster from re reusable cluster API profiles. And also on top of that, we add extra security and enterprise features. I mentioned things like uh, security scans, backup, S-bomb tracking, uh, role-based access control, etc. Whether it's managed or unmanaged Kubernetes, you can use Palette for any cloud or at the edge. You can try it yourself. Uh, it's a freemium model. Um, so you, know, you can have up to, you know, I would say, two or three cluster uh, free depending on the resources and the number of nodes. But you can really give it a try. It's very declarative. Same sort of you know, re reconciliation principle for deploying and managing all your clusters. Um, now, what I want to add is you know, for, for you to, to get the key takeaways for today. So of course, Cluster API is a proven tool to manage Kubernetes cluster. If you combine Cluster API with GitOps, then you can really provide a lot of automation at large scale. But it's just the beginning. As we, we've seen today, Kubernetes needs many more you know, software layers to be production ready. So we've seen the cluster autoscaler, the additional uh, add-on uh, software that Palette will give you basically out of the box. Um, so that gives you the foundation. Um, and you have to build on cluster API to add your, you know, all your enterprise requirement. And of course, that may require a lot of the sweat and beaten nails. So yeah, you can try try our palette to see the difference and how easy that will be compared to what we've done today. Uh, what we've achieved in one hour, you can probably do it in less than five minutes. Um, another couple of things. So uh, call to action, please check out our cluster API and declarative Kubernetes management report that you can find here. And finally, uh, come and visit us at our booth S22 at KubeCon Europe 2023, 2023 in Amsterdam, which is happening in a couple of weeks. So that's it uh, for today. Thank you for joining again, and I'll see you in the next one.